Hello, I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block, politics, perspectives, and players. As the number of coronavirus cases in China grows every day, global economic forecasters are becoming concerned about the long-term impact on the economy and China's ability to continue the global supply chain. During the 2003 SARS outbreak, the Chinese economy was paralyzed for a few months. But the country's contribution to the global economy has increased exponentially since then. It's now the world's second largest economy, and it produces a lot more than just T-shirts and plastic toys today. Joining me now is Perrin Beatty, president and CEO of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Beatty, thank you for joining us today. Glad to be here. Thank you. Let's start with taking a look at, at what so far coronavirus has meant for the global economy and the potential threat that it poses. Uh, China, a major economic driver worldwide. There are entire cities being sit, shut down and cordoned off at this time. How serious a threat do you think this is to global markets? Well, it's serious, but I think it's important as well for us to be measured. Um, the fact is that when we look at China, they were going to see slower growth this year than, we, than they've seen in the past several years. So that's a concern to begin with. This will take a certain amount of, uh, of growth off that as well, so it'll slow things down that much further. The difference between this and, and the time of SARS is that today, China's role in the global economy is that it, it generates twice as, as high a percentage of global, of global GDP as it did back at the time of SARS. So it means then that in terms of demand in China and in terms of uh, China's ability to supply the global economy, uh, the impact is, is uh, more significant potentially. What are some of the key industries that this could affect? Because I, we all know you look at your clothes or your phone or your shoes or your Tupperware and it often says made in China stamped on the back. Uh, there's parts of the supply chain yeah. for things that are made here in Canada that will be affected. So what are some of the prime industries that are already being disrupted or industries where this could become very difficult? There are all sorts of manufacturers who rely on inputs from China and they, they operate on a just-in-time basis. That is. Uh, suppliers are going to supply them with the goods that they need just in time for them to put them into production. If you get your supply chain cut, that means they have to shut down your, your production facility. So there is a concern. We've seen around the world some instances where this has had an impact on manufacturing facilities. Uh, another example would be tourism. Uh, clearly there are concerns now as to uh, what happens, particularly with tourism from China, but we've also seen it with cruise ships and others with people pulling back, so there will be an impact there. Uh, there's an impact in terms of the ability of Canadians who are doing business in China to be able to fly our people there and to meet with suppliers or potential customers in China. Uh, so in a whole range of different areas, there, there's an impact. I'd stress that it's relatively low at this point. Uh, some of the good news is we're seeing some slowing down in terms of the infection rate and the epicenter of the of the the virus, the real question is where does it go from here? And obviously we can be affected in Canada for Canadian businesses two ways. The first is uh, because we're dealing with China, what, what does this mean for supply chains and for supplying customers? But the other is if we find this breaking out of there and becoming a global pandemic, and if it were to spread to Canada the way in which uh, SARS did to Toronto, for example, uh, what does this mean for the ability of businesses to be able to operate? Um, and so we are certainly urging, particularly smaller businesses and medium-sized businesses, to develop contingency plans. So what do we do uh, if a supplier can't supply? Do we have alternative sources of supply? Or do, or do we have enough inventory to allow us to continue? If there's a problem with a public transportation system that employees can't get to work, is it possible for them to telecommute? Do you have a do you have an information tree in the office that informs your employees if for some reason they can't come in? Uh, if there's a problem in the schooling system that it shuts down and people have to stay home with their children, how do you keep your business running? These are all issues that that larger businesses uh, learn to deal with after SARS, uh, but often smaller businesses don't have those plans in place and they need to have them. Well, I think it's really interesting that you're talking about not only planning what happens if Chinese markets don't reopen, but what happens if businesses here start seeing some of the constraints that Chinese business has seen in terms of being able to get around or, or do trade or ship things or get on public transit. How overall would you describe the threat in particular to the Canadian economy if this epidemic continues to worsen and spread? Well, it, it, as we're looking at it today, it's, it's certainly manageable. Uh, yes, it does impact economic growth in Canada. 
uh, in a negative way, but it's something that, that we can overcome and that we can manage, and we will still see positive growth through the year. Uh, at this point, we simply don't know what's going to happen in terms of the spread of the contagion and uh, whether or not it's possible to contain it. Our public health authorities learned an enormous amount from SARS, and they're responding exceptionally well, uh, but we're going to have to feel our, our way along. But, but Mercedes, one of the, the, the key points here is this may or may not turn out to be a pandemic, but there is no doubt that there will be pandemics in the future. Mr. Beattie, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me.